Oh, sorry. <laughs> I lost you there. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. So, I don't know what happened. I was unfortunately, trying to block it. Unfortunately, we can't even see you, but we know your it's rolling and um but we can hear you. Yeah, I'm back on now, I guess. Yeah, so let's continue to hear you. We can't see you. I, c I can't see you. Maybe some other people can, but that's not a problem. But okay, so, so one million times. So what I was trying to say earlier is that, you know, after the under-17s, you have the university classics invitational, you know, for these yeah. schools. And of course, I also made a submission on club cricket championship, you know, because whether we like it or not, yeah, club cricket in Nigeria is probably worth over 40 million naira, you know, every yeah. year, which means... If you look at what every club puts into organizing cricket games throughout the cricket season, you know, so yes. it's very important that we create a platform for these clubs to show what they have to offer. After club cricket, yeah, you look at the state's cricket association, you know, yes. and, and that is why we, we also put up the, you know, the, what do you call it, the national states, uh, the national states league, you know, where you have state cricket association getting involved. So all the mm -hmm. NCAA's to create these platforms. Once these platforms are created, everybody, you know, everybody who has the opportunity to be part of that process will automatically join. You know, under 17 schools, we know that there's a tournament to play. University and, invitational, and, university and, knows there's a tournament to play, you know. And, and yeah. the, my, question, my question is this, right? Yeah. Is this something in place or is this your theory? Is this your presentation? Because we need to know where we are with these things, right? One, what, what I know for sure, right, two tournaments that are in place already, you know, one is the under-17s and the other is the States League, you know. One of the ones we have discussed and we have agreed to go ahead with once we have the right funding is the University Invitationals because it's long overdue, you know. Cricket needs to get back to our universities and it's something the board is not looking back to. So tell, it's, it's, tell, me, how you're, tell me how you're going to achieve this. Cricket is almost non-existence in, in University of Ibadan, for example. Yeah. Right? Lagos is lucky because Lagos is Lagos. Nothing no, even, can really die in even, Lagos. Even, even Lagos is going to struggle because if you look at Unilag, right, how many cricketers do you have there? Do you have up to 16 players playing? You know, you, you, I mean, unless they go into the universities, you don't have a chance, you know. So it's not just about, and that is why, one of the policies we are trying to adopt as NCF is that we take university education seriously for our cricketers. You know, the first thing up here, yeah, after schools, we have to encourage them to enroll with JAM to get into the universities mm -hmm. because this is the only way cricket can continue to survive. Unless you are trying to say, okay, mm -hmm. let's go to the university, sports council, let's go there and start teaching their uh, um, 100 level uh, students cricket, which you know that it's almost going to be impossible to get the kind of uh, quality you want to get at that age or at those ages, you know. So it's something that uh, we are looking for. That is not impossible, right? I can, yeah. on the top of my head, right, I can count three people who started playing cricket in of 100, course. no, not in 100 level, in 200 or 300 level, right? Yeah. University. Yeah. So, right, if, if I was to say, advise the NCF uh, going to the cricket, you know, into the universities. It's quite yeah. easy. One yeah. thing we should know that the universities want sportsmen, right? And NCF should, you know, key into this. All the university are asking for is to score the minimum entrance, right? In yeah. fact, once you score that minimum, all you need to do is to hand over that guy to the sports council if this is coming from the NCF, if NCF has written a letter to the University of Ibadan Sports Council, for example, that five of our students have made the minimum to get into your school, how do we get admission into this school? Or can you help them, you know, uh, make the admission process easier? Right? Well, yeah. That is one way. And if you do that to every school every year, that will be your cricketers in schools. I agree. I mean, ODP, I agree because, you see, for the present NCF, I think we are lucky to have had this working in Unilag, you know. We are, we are, this opening is also there at ABU Zaria for those who have studied in the north, you know. I mean, but the truth is, the first step, you have to have your guys passing their exams and 
having the opportunity, you know, that's the first point, you know. You need to encourage them to see future in that, you know. So if, if you don't do that, then there is no hope, you know. And that's the first point. People must know that. Students must know that. They must be guided. When they finish their secondary school, they go take jam. Yeah. And then we can then start saying, okay, we can maybe open up a section at the NCAA where you can have counselors talking to these kids and then making them understand that, look, if you can pass your jam at this level, you have opportunity in Ife, you have opportunity in UI, you have opportunity in Unilag, Zaria, and stuff like that. So it's not something, I know that UNN does it. I know most of the cricketers they have in UNN, you know. Those guys schooled in, in the East, you know. Most of them, Charles Obasi, all those guys that went to, that are in UNN presently, you know. If you are to have a university uh, tournament, I'm sure maybe the, the, the teams that would have better cricketers would probably be Unilag and UNN. You know, because they've tried to achieve that. So it's something that we have. But the key, again, is the cricketers must understand. The clubs, the states, and the NCF must show that consciousness to make sure that they go to school. You know, and that's yes. the key. And that message needs to be passed from the NCF. Exactly. I agree 100%. I agree 100%. Yes. So, we, you named Kunle Adegbola as your last guy in your top six. Yeah. Right. So let's do the next three. Uh, okay. Uh, the next three, I think, are uh, one of the guy at number seven. I think um, I didn't really see him bat, yeah. But if I look at those that I've seen bat, yeah, I want to see Gide Bejidi at number seven, you know. You didn't, what do you mean you did not see him bat? No, I mean, I was going to pick, select a few names that I read about, you know. I'm trying to focus on those that I saw. But, you know, so GD will be at number seven for me, you know. Um, number eight, now I'm talking about, I have to look for a spinner, right? And if, yeah. I, look at, if I look at my team um, and the spin options that are available, you know, I would, I would, yeah, you know, I would pick a guy, say, Ahun Chogu, because I know he spins um, and yeah. he hits the ball quite hard. So I will play him at number eight. He's going to be my one spinner in the team, and of course, he's okay. going to be a late, late middle order batsman. And of course, okay. after that, then I start looking at from number nine, ten, eleven. I'm looking at I'm looking at for my bowlers, and one of the guys so number I saw, nine. number number nine. Yeah, trust me. Yeah, these guys swing the ball both ways, and I faced him towards his retirement period. And I think wow. he's one of the best bowlers I've seen or I, that I met, that I saw. You know, when you talk about swing bowling, his name is Mr. Sheer Fadaunsi. You know, he swings the ball both ways. So I'll pick him as one of my opening bowlers, but he will bat at number nine or maybe number 10, if I say. Um, so if I'm to go again, I think that's your three now. Seven, eight, nine. Yes, that's, that's, that's my three. Yeah, that's the yes, three. That's three. Yeah. So yeah, number seven. I want to go at number eight, share for the one at number nine. Yes. So at at Ibadan Metropolitan Cricket Club, right? One one yeah. of our aims, one of the things we're aiming for is to get people into the national team ladder. And we have our profiles we look out for as well. And okay. um, we try to you know nurture these young ones to say this is the proper way of playing cricket. This is what you need to do. Some of those things you've talked about before going to university, um, you know, making sure that um, they're writing jam when they should, they have the money to buy the form and all that. So if you were to come in, if we invite you to say, come and speak with our boys, what are the three things you're going to tell them? Look, the first thing I'm going to tell you is that uh, life is up and down. Yeah, there are good and bad times about life. Um, yeah. School is going to prepare for the opportunity. You know, yeah. prepare for the opportunities because cricket will always give you those opportunities. Guys like you, what you're doing for those guys, trust me, some of them might never understand. Yeah, There are people looking for those opportunities. How are they taking those opportunities? You know, and the third thing I have to tell them is they have to be disciplined. You know, mm -hmm. they have to really be disciplined. I mean, um, I see a lot of young players at 18, 19 play for the country and all iPhones and stuff like that. You know, I, I mean, I didn't, maybe if, iPhone was there when I was 18, 19. Maybe I would have had one. But even now, I'm not using an iPhone and I'm not saying they don't deserve it. But, you know, really, what do you want? You know, what can you invest in? What can you learn? You know, mm -hmm. and most of you guys really don't have solid homes. When I mean financial backing homes, you know, to be able to go mm -hmm. through university. 
I didn't have one myself, you know, and that's why I said discipline has brought me this far because every opportunity I was given, I tried to make use of, you know. So those three things are things they're going to they're gonna hear from yeah. me. Okay. Uh, now I have an interesting question for you, right? And it's, okay. it's, it's not political, but I don't want you to answer it politically. I want I you to try. answer it straightforward. I yes. will try. So, the, so just take for instance, there is no election. There is no election. You don't have to do an election to do NCF. You have the power, right, to, to speak to, say, the president of Nigeria. And the president of Nigeria says, okay, this guy and this guy, you know, should lead cricket, or one guy should lead cricket. In your books, right, tell me three people that you will take to the president. Um, again, I'm going to be looking at people that I've worked with. Um, because if I've never worked with you, I can't mention your name because I don't know, or you probably would have shown no, no, me. No, no. Some people so, you would have seen from afar, maybe you did not work with them directly, you know. I think, I think the first person, the first yeah. person, yeah, the first person that would, that would come to my mind, you know, is a guy like Femi Sholebo, you know, okay. because uh, oh, I know, oh, I know the, the, the first thing he wants is for every young cricketer to be successful. You know, mm. and having the opportunity to have worked with him in Benjeleki tells me that, irrespective of who you are, you know, I mean, Femi is a guy that will play against GCI. A GCI guy gets a hundred. He hands him an envelope, you know, and then he, you're like, okay, how about we were your teammate? And I like, say, look, I just love success, you know, and that's the kind of, that's one person you want to have on your team, you know. Mm. Uh, the second person, I would say, I would put on, on the card is a Uya Bata, uh, because basically I've seen him and I see that he's very straightforward. You know, when he says, let's do this, he goes out, let's do it. And this is how he thinks we can do it correctly without breaking processes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, no matter how tough people might think it is, he wants to get things done this way. And um, if I'm to think of a third person I would like to, to take on board, um, I think one of them has done it before, you know, but probably things went differently. I think, uh, who do I have? Who do I have? I think the name I have is too, I don't think, no, it won't, it won't, it won't do well as president because it's quite complicating. I think I would still give Ukraine a shot, right? Um, because who? of the present, the present president. You know? So three oh. of them... Both no, of them are the this is listen. This is why I said it's not. I don't want it to be political, right? No, no. I will tell you but why. I understand where you're coming from. No, let me explain. Let me explain. People right. would obviously think it's political. The person you've worked with and you've spoken to at close range, you know mm -hmm. that person beyond the person you have not worked with, right? The three people I've mentioned, I've spoken to them at clo close range, right? But mm -hmm. if you want to go politically. The country is too complex itself to be managed by anybody, you know, and that is why you have your best brains not interested in coming to become your president, you know. So that is why the few people who manage to become president either get into trouble because they can no longer take the criticism that comes their way, or because they get entangled in the in the politics and the, uh, will I say the the various uh, razzmatazz or the difficulties in running anything yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's my first, my first pick, like I said, Femi Shulibo will be on my team, Uya yeah. Pata will be on my team. And presently yeah. looking around, in terms of those who are available to run cricket, I will still give him a chance to play. Yeah. That's All right. It. Okay, I'll give you one more person. That was my fault. I'll give you one more person. Name one more person. Who you uh, think you would take it to the president? If I look at one more person... If I'm looking at the state chairman now, I'm looking at... Uh, no, they, well, they don't need to be... Well, anyway, yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah, it has, to say. yeah, it has to be somebody that I've seen in administration, basically, you know. Um, you know, because the presidency requires you to be able to do so many things. You can't just be an administrator and not be a marketing tycoon and not, you know. It's complex. So I'm looking for that all-round personality, you know, to pick. Mm. I, I can't just say... You can be a successful administrator and not understanding the marketing side on how to raise funds for Nigerian cricket. That is why I have mm. to be very careful as to who I pick. You, well, know? you, you can you can outsource that now, can't you? Well, 
again, yeah, you're right. I can outsource it. But again, even to have the ability to want to accept, to give that responsibility to somebody else is also there. You know, the, the ability to say, look, or the P, I want you to do this job for me and I let you do it. It's also there. Mm. I might want it. I might not be able to allow you to do it. You know, and so we have those complexities in our administration presently, you know. And maybe one person I would like to get involved is Ola Bio Dudua. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Is this I very too. much around and involved in cricket? Yes, it's very much around. It's involved in cricket. I mean, the only, the good thing that I've seen, trust me, is an exceptional gentleman. You know, he's one guy that, what do we have to do? He backs it up all the way. You know, and see, Ibejuleki, apart from GCI, right? and maybe FCC, has been around for almost more than 10 years now. And these two gentlemen are just, without being on ground, they've run the clubs. You understand? And yes, somebody might say, in my heart, I'm sentimental about it. The truth is, these are guys that don't add sentiment or feeling. I've worked with them, and I know at several times they say, endurance, what will work? You know, and those who are close to me would know that I could be your enemy, you might not be my friend, but if I could get results with you, I get you to do the job. You understand? These are the kind of people they are. You know, they don't care whether I don't like or the peace phase. If it's, if the peace can give us a, get the job done, let's get it. Leave those other parts. Let him get the job done. So that's, that's, these are the four guys, to be honest, I will continue to want to keep in the game. And if I have my right. way, I'll have four of them on the board. <laughs> All right. Two more, two more people, two more people in your team of 11. Okay, uh, so I'm looking at my bowlers now. I've mentioned Chair Father Onsi as one of my front lines. Yeah, uh, you, I would yeah. choke you as spinner. Yeah. You know, I think um, from, I didn't see some of the big names people talk about. The ones I saw, I think I would love to see Joshua Ogunlala in my 11. Um, okay. He's gonna open. He's got amazing control with the ball I mean, at his best. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at where are my swing bowlers. I think Dakwa Degoke. You know, uh, <laughs> I was so, I was wondering if you're not going to mention that name. <laughs> I was so, you know, if, if I think of, I mean, I remember when I was in Pioneers, if I had to play GCI, I trust me, I don't sleep well because I know that Dakwa <laughs> Degoke will bomb me ten overs and Tayo Kusunya will bomb me ten overs. You know. So those are, I mean, these are things, these are memories that I can never forget, you know. And it's always an opportunity. Every time I think of those quality of cricketers that I played against, you know, I know I was privileged, you know. And Dakwa Degoke, I respect him so much, the way he carries himself, a fantastic cricketer, a gentleman to the core, you know. That's, that's key for me. Dakwa, my number 11. My number 10, of course, is um, Joshua Ogunlola. Of course, Joshua, number 9. Ogunlola. So, I have been reading some people shouting me, 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 call my name, call my name. This is an opportunity for them to appear. If you like them enough, no wala. So, there is, uh, in my own books, there is somebody who is going to take you water to the pitch, and I call him the water boy. So, who would that be? Um, and so, someone did talk about somebody who is um, a 12th man who does the 12th man job like is part of the team and it looks like technically the 12th man is part of the team isn't it yeah of course see to be honest yeah i've always as a cricketer i've always had respect for everybody that made the cricket game possible you know mm -hmm. and that starts from your grounds man it starts from the league secretaries it starts from the guys who organize who bring the drinks to the ground who make sure the drinks are cold, you know? So yeah. what kind of a cricketer are you? You know, are you the guy that just picks up and... You know, it's quite boring to sit out there scoring and some people are running around and they're just scoring. At the end of the day, everybody's happy. So cricket is quite unique. You know, and I remember in UI, those days, people used to have a female uh, cricketer, a female scorer, you know? So yeah. it's, it's something that we encourage people to do. So the trust man for me... Um, if I look at a trust man, a trust man I would love to have, you know, bring me water anytime, any day. You know, he's a young boy. He's presently not in the country. His name is Saida Akolade. You know, I would want him to be in, on that trust man team. And trust me, anytime Saeed runs onto the field, he wants to win. You know, even if he's not batting or he's not wearing pads, he's wishing you well. You know, that's the kind of guy you want to see having being your trust man. 
Fantastic. That's fantastic. I've got two more questions for you. If anyone here has got questions, please let, let, let me know. But uh, before you go, I want to go back to Ibado Metropolitan Cricket Club. You, you've seen us grow. You, knew, you know majority of the team, you know, how the team started, everything about the team, right? One thing that you will advise IMCC to do, what would it be? Um, to be honest, yeah, I think I think you you guys are a group of fantastic gentlemen from the Akiemi brothers, yourself, um, Taiwo, you know, I, I mean, now Taiwo, you know, and Cindy, I mean, uh, Ewete, the way you guys have played in Ibadan, coming up to Lagos, encouraging young cricketers. You know, I think I want to see you guys register that team as a, a name in the in Nigerian cricket history. You know, I want to see. Um, you guys get more quality into it. At least try and come into the Division 1 one season and stay there for some time. I want to see the club grow because you guys, you know, you don't want it to look like, you know, when you guys are not there for whatever reason, the club doesn't stay. So that tradition needs to go through, you know. Make it a club home name. I know you guys pay dues and all that, you know. I want Because you, you've been there longer than uh, Ibejileke, I think. You've been there longer yeah. than some of the other clubs, you know. You have to uh, encourage players to stay. Uh, GCI and FCC yeah, and F exactly. So it's time to pull it to make it a big club name in in Nigeria. And I don't know why. I mean, you guys have some young cricketers who have left you. Why are they leaving? You know, maybe you need to talk about that. You need to keep them for like three, four, five days. I understand there are quite some poaching arrangements. Some guys put. I mean, I'll take you back to the years of pioneers here. Yeah? It was a dream for any cricketer in Pioneers to leave Pioneers to play in Cosmo. You either be a feeder team. If you're a feeder team to GCI, then okay, seal up that relationship and make the club a bigger club for GCI such that the players that play for you, when they grow, uh, grow that second division league, they go on to play for GCI. You know, and set those kind of parameters. And then, because I want to see a bigger IMCC, because you guys are there long enough. You know what the history of Nigerian cricket is in the 90s, early 90s. Most of you played in the kicks uh, games in from government college Ibadan, you know, UI cricket, you know, so, so you guys have a rich history, you know, and I want to see a situation where people follow these clubs. If we start writing the history of cricket club in Nigeria, for instance, you're going to go to the 70s, look, talk of the Dias, the Lagos, Cosmopolitans, you know, IMCC will be mentioned at some point. So you can't continue to be a French team, you know, it's time for your guys to get a lot of more guys coming and then grow the club to become something bigger. Fantastic. I hope um, the people people are listening um, from me about the Metropolitan Cricket Club. Um, thank you for that. Um, and that will be taken on board. Uh, Rasita will just join, imagine, <laughs> after they call him. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I called his name and he joined, so I just woke him up. Come join, <laughs> Yes, uh, he's been working really hard um, Behind the scenes, and uh, yeah, and everyone in the club, every every one person in the club, have been doing that. So, so to be honest, yeah, to be to be honest, with the P, I I really give you guys credit, yeah, because I'm a firm believer in running cricket club the traditional way, mm -hmm. where you have membership and everybody's responsible. You know, it's mm -hmm. very important, you know, and that is what you guys have tried to do. So you're trying, you know, like for instance, when I played cricket in the UK, and it was like a membership. You know, people pay deals, people are part of the club. You know. Cricket is different from football, you know. Yes, I know some people will earn semi to earn a living from cricket. Yeah, but you guys have managed to keep your friendship, uh, become there amongst you guys together. And that is a wonderful thing to see all these years. Yes. So, like I said, when we started, uh, if you want to become a pay, paid member, that's good. If you want to become um, a playing member, we will think about it, uh, but just uh, <laughs> trust me, you won't, you won't, you won't, you won't get too many runs from me now. You won't get too many runs from me now. The only thing you will get from me is advising well, the younger, the younger cricketers. But trust me, if you also, be, that also be good for us, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, the truth is, um, there's a program series coming up very soon where we'll open mm. up the opportunity to start working because, again, at the end of the day. We can sit here and talk about cricket. If we don't give back to the game, either give mm. back as a coach or as a mentor or as a motivational speaker or somebody mm. that will motivate youngsters to play or go and join them on the cricket field 
and teach them how to play cricket properly, they won't benefit, you know. And you don't want such a great talent to be wasted. You have to come out and help. So there would be time where I would organize some of those programs where I would get a chance to meet some of your guys and be part of them. You know, I, because for once, I love working with kids. And I, when I see young stars, I'm excited, you know, because I know the opportunities cricket gives to me. I want to give back. Yeah, so one last question before I go. And this is about the board, right? Andy, I don't want you to... If, if it is something that you have not discussed in the NCF board or something you're not planning to... I will appreciate it if you say, no, it's not, we're not talking about it or you okay. know, that kind of thing. So this question is very important and it's coming back from what you said earlier. You yeah. said that um, exposing yourself, exposing yourself, Kunle Adebola, P4 and maybe Shegolainka to the UK, whether the UK, pages and all that has them. Um, I'm playing with people. Sometimes you play in the league, right? When you came to the UK, there were some yeah. Saturday leagues that you played in. And yeah. It actually improved black, your game. Uh, yeah. Black is, yeah. yeah. So what was the plan for international cricketers in the national team? Sorry, national team cricketers. What was the plan in terms of exposure? Is that something you've talked about at the board? Is there a plan going on? If there is a plan, what does it look like? See, to be honest, yeah, I think, let's be very honest here. Yeah. If I ask myself, are we ready for that with this new crop of players? You know, because having cricketers just travel out of the country to go and play, you need to be very careful, right? You, you need to have the right, they have to be ready as cricketers, you know. The question is, when we were traveling, you know, we didn't go messing around, misbehaving on the streets of UK or trying to mess around with um, uh, citizens or, you know, going, playing around, clubbing and stuff like that. So you need to make sure you have cricketers who are ready to take those responsibilities. At the moment, we have some quality, you know. And again, we have to discuss with the players. They, they have to be prepared for it. You know, from the NCF level, we don't have the resources to say, we want to do that now. We're every season, we are sending four or five players abroad, you know, because back then, it wasn't the NCF that was sending us. It was we making, the, making use of the opportunity that was available to us, you know. So now the cricketers need to change their ideology and the mentality. They have to be ready to take that ownership upon themselves, you know. And of course, when they are ready to take that ownership, the NCF, trust me, will be willing to give that support if we feel, because when I started traveling, of course, NCF would give me letters, backup letters and stuff like that. If a cricketer comes to me and says, look, I have a club that have approached me. They want me to play here. These are the terms and conditions. Can you get me a document from NCF? Trust me, we'll give that kind of document. You know, I'll personally go and fight to make sure people get those kind of support. But the truth is, mm -hmm. the players need to come of age to want to do that. You know, And it's going to be really, psychologically, they have to be prepared. Because have they ever been alone? I mean, imagine you me alone in the UK for six months, you know, playing cricket and stuff like that, you know, living with foreigners and stuff like that. So, I mean, the funding, who's going to pay for it, you know? At the NCA, we're not going to, we're not taking care of those kind of things. But what we are focusing on is we've been able to say, okay, we want to bring in a foreign coach. We've been able to say, okay, it's time we start designing programs so that our cricketers will train more often, even when they're not playing tournament. And where we identify with the ICC African Initiative we we'll send players to high performance programs in South Africa, you know, and then they can grow from there. But if you talk of the okay. long term club thing, we are not looking that direction now. Fantastic. Thank you. So, one last one. If I had said one last one before, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> one last one. The new coach, will he be working with a team? Is he bringing a team? Or is he just go, is he going to be by himself? Okay, so what we are, what he's going to, he's not coming with a team, right? Because we are going to, we, we also want to give our, our coaches the opportunity to learn from, from him. You know, you, you, can't, you can't get a foreign coach forever, you know. One of the things he's going to come to try and do is to change the ideology of our coaches. And so, trust me, the opportunity will be created for people to want to work with him, you know. And we hope that his time in Nigeria will not be wasted because... We are not just doing it because we want to go and win the World Cup. We are doing it how many, because... We, how many years is it signed for? Um, will be signed? Well, I think I will leave that till we, 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 we make that public officially. I wouldn't want to disclose that now. 
I hope you'll forgive me for that, you know. But it's all right. The, uh, yeah, you know, so, so the question you've asked is a very key question. He's not bringing anybody here. We are going to be supporting him with the local coaches and they are going to learn from him. But we expect that our local coaches should be given that opportunity to also learn from the very best. Is it going to be based in Lagos, Abuja, Kano, Abiyokuta, Ibado? Where? Well, uh, for now, he might be based in Abuja, but he's going to be moving around a lot. He's going to be moving around a lot because, you see... We, we, what, we don't, what will he be doing in Abuja? Again, the first thing is um, you, you want to keep him close by where you have all your secretariat and team being able to work with him and that. Secondly, that is where... Andy, that, Andy more than 70% yeah. of your players are in Lagos. Well, the truth is, right, yes, somebody said, what will he be doing in Abuja? The truth is, like I said, it's going to be based in Abuja, but it's going to be moving around a lot, right? Which means most of the time, it's going to be working in our high-performance centers. We, are, we have planned to put up six high-performance centers across the country, one in each geopolitical zone. So because it's not just going to sit in Abuja, even if it's based in Lagos, you understand, it's going to have to move around a bit more. So the key, is you ask the question, he will be based in Abuja, but we want him to move around a lot because he's going to go see talent for himself. We can't bring all 100 cricketers to him at the same time. You understand? Even when he's based so, in Lagos, so, yeah, you know, you, you have... You're so have for the national team, yeah, you know. So for the national team, the national team will be going to him, will be moving to him anytime there is um, something happening. Well, moving, it depends on where the camps are going to be held, you know. I can't tell you the camp could be in Abuja. The camps could be in Lagos. We're, we're talking about his base. We're talking about where he work, you know. We're trying to build half of my center at CBS. We're trying to build one in Abuja. We're trying to build one in Benin. We're trying to build one in Kaduna, you know. So every region is going to have one. But he's going to move around, yeah. He's going to go to UI, I mean, to Liberty Stadium to help coaches, you know. So we're going to design those kind of programs. So it's not like the guy just wants to come and sit down in Abuja doing nothing. You understand? You know, so because when you employ a guy, you want to also monitor what he's doing with his life and around the game. So that is why he's based in Abuja. But he's going to move with the team where the camps are. And the camps should be situated where we feel is best in terms of resources and availability of funds. Fantastic. Andy, it's been wonderful speaking to you, speaking cricket. I know in, in, our, in our other world, it gets what yeah. they talk about, but <laughs> see what I mean. No, trust me. I mean, Rappi, it's really, I didn't know you were the one that was going to be up here. I thought, really? uh, it, oh, I thought it was a lovely day, you know, and then I went around to the Ibadan Metro Club, and then I saw uh, Taiwo, so I was expecting Taiwo. And so when I came up and I, I heard the Bedou you were jamming, I said, see this Ninja boy, where really jam Bedou for. But I like it, you're keeping it real, I know, listening to the Nigerian music and staying up to date. Good to be yes. talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to be talking to you. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, we know time is very important to you. It's all for everyone, but you know what? Thanks a lot for giving us this insight. Do you remember Cheers, what mate. we said about um, pipeline? We will be monitoring you with that pipeline. You have you have set your own pipeline. To be honest, to be honest, yeah. To be honest, yeah. If you look at if you look at what I'd said three years ago, if you go to my yeah. Facebook page and what I put there before I came on board, right? I try yeah. to focus on what I said I would chase and my wishes for Nigerian cricket. One thing yeah. that is missing, one thing that is missing is quality tough wickets, which is what yes. I am hoping that that in the I next one and a half years. Will be able to achieve that, you know. It's yes. tough. So it's, it's tough because according you have. To you, right? Yeah. I, according yeah. to you, Aregan was here. That's the one person I was sure of. Aregan yes. was here. I was here. I think Shola and Yatu was here. The yeah. two pipelines that I picked up was one, the tough, um, sorry, the concrete in TPS is going off, is in the pipeline, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You didn't say where, but it's in the pipeline. The second one yeah. is the university. Classes. Invitation, yeah, it's invitation. In the, it's in the pipeline. Yeah. So yeah. we're watching out for those two pipelines. And the OFM, thank you very much for coming with, to us today. Yeah, well, we really appreciate you. Um, bless yeah. you. And um, thank you very much for your time. Cheers. Always Cheers. welcome. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Bye.